Hey everyone, it's Kelsey here and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new So this video is my tips for starting your own mobile hairdressing business And if you just found this video, you should check out the video I posted right before this because there is a part one to this But I talk a lot so I had to break this into two parts So this is part two on my tips for being your own mobile hairdresser so this tip right here is very important to me and that is to be assertive when it comes to your availability and that's because as a mobile hairdresser you are either going to people's houses doing their hair or they are coming to your house but you're not like in an actual salon atmosphere so in my last video i was actually talking about how that makes it easy for you as a stylist to forget that you're in a professional atmosphere even though you're at a house but now this is showing how sometimes it's easy for your clients to forget that even though this is a house service it is still supposed to be a professional business atmosphere so because you are always in a home setting people tend to forget that your time is valuable so you want to be assertive with your availability i'm saying this because i've personally experienced how much people can just not care about being on time for their appointment or being available when you need them there so in order to avoid losing any money and wasting your time you always want to make sure that you either have um a late or a cancellation fee or you're taking deposits and me personally i feel like taking deposits is so much easier because if a cancel if a client cancels on you it's very hard to actually get their money for canceling on you. A lot of times they could just never answer their phone again and you just wasted your time and gas. Just to give you guys an example of how frustrating this can be, I have this one client who luckily does not call me anymore. I don't think I've done his hair in like over a year and I'm very grateful for that. But this particular client, he lives about a half hour away from me and he knows that. And whenever I'm traveling to people's houses, I usually tell them when I'm on my way. I don't have to tell them that because, you know, if I already said I'm going to be there at 11 o'clock, I'm going to be there at 11, but I still like to let them know that I'm on my way. So this guy in particular, I would text him as I'm leaving my house and then he would respond like 10 minutes later and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not home yet. Can we reschedule? And at this point, I'm already on my way there. You know what I mean? Like I've already left my driveway. I'm already 10 minutes down the road. Like, you, you know what time I'm going to be there. Why? It's... <sighs> I just get so annoyed because you obviously knew you weren't going to be home. If you're not home right now, that means you already left. So when you left, you knew you were leaving. So why wasn't I one of the first people you contacted and said, hey, don't come over anymore. I won't be there. And he had a habit of doing this. That's why I'm so glad he doesn't call me anymore. And this is before I got the idea of doing deposits. So you want to take a deposit. And for me, I think your deposit should cover your gas at the very least because with this guy I've already driven to his house sometimes like sometimes people don't even have the courtesy to even answer your phone you know like let's say that I didn't tell him I was on my way and I just showed up there because I was expecting him to be there as he should have I would have driven all the way there and have to drive all the way back that's an hour of driving that I'm not getting paid for not only did I not get paid for the service, but I'm not getting paid for the gas that I've already spent. So I always think that your deposit should cover your gas fare at the very least because people do that. People just don't care and it's sad. A lot of people don't seem to understand the importance of making an appointment. So like I said, you could also charge a cancellation fee because I would have been in my rights to be like, well, you still need to pay me for this or pay me for whatever, but I didn't say that in advance, so I was just out of money. So, you know, like you don't want to be in that situation. And also you could have had another client in that time you know what i'm saying like when you get really busy and you find yourself getting booked up it's going to be even more frustrating because in most cases when somebody cancels on me there was somebody who would have taken their spot and i told them no because you had that spot first so i feel like if people cancel with no time for you to reschedule they definitely owe you some sort of money obviously i don't like to say that deposits are non-refundable because let's say that someone books some, something and they cancel two weeks before their appointment that's plenty of time to get somebody else to take that spot but if you're canceling the morning of or the night before that's time that i'm not gonna that's time that's wasted now because i could have had somebody else and i can't get them this short notice so that's the point of taking deposits or charging cancellation fees or whatever it's just to make sure that your time that they wasted is still covered even though you're not getting the entire fee you are going to get you still get something you know what i mean i'm having a really hard time explaining this but i hope i'm making sense so you always want to cover yourself and make sure you have some sort of money you know secured just in case you do get those flaky clients because you are gonna find those and you find them a lot more as a mobile hairdresser than you do in the actual shops. Because at least in a shop, people can see clients walking in and out and they can see, oh, I'm not the only client that you have. But a lot of people think that 
well, you had nothing else to do today anyway. You were only going to do my hair, so congratulations. Now you get a free day off. And the truth is, no, I didn't want a day off. I was prepared to work today, and you wasted my time. Also, along the lines of being assertive, you want to encourage appointments. Because, again, a lot of times people tend to forget that they're not your only client, and they just think they can call you whenever they want, and you have to be available. This is something that I also experience a lot. I've had people call me, like, the night before, like, say it's, like, 6 o'clock in the evening, they'll be like, hey, girl, can you come over right now and do these braids? I have somewhere to be tomorrow morning, and it's very important that I get it done tonight. And then if I can't make it that second, if I can't drop whatever I'm doing and drive off to their house, they have the nerve to get upset that I wasn't available. People really tend to forget that one, I might have already had a client that I'm working on, or two, I also have a life outside of this, I might have just been doing something. So you always want to encourage your clients to make an appointment, okay? Like, don't sound stuck up and be like, it is so hard to get an appointment with me, you need to book like five years in advance to get a hold of me. No, you know, but still be like, I definitely recommend taking appointments, I'm very busy, I have multiple clients, so just to make sure that I can do your hair when you need it done. I recommend booking at least a week in advance or whatever, you know? So my next tip is to advertise yourself. You are a mobile hairdresser, which means you are not in a shop. You do not have a storefront. There's no awning. There's no sign. There is no way for people to know that you're there. Your only advertisement really is word of mouth. And you can't be 100% dependent on people talking about you to bring you in clients. You need to go out and talk about yourself. So me personally, I try and find any opportunity that I can to advertise myself when I'm talking to people. I can be talking to somebody in the grocery store or in the beauty store or whatever, and it could just come up that I'm a hairdresser. If I see any way to inch myself in there, I'm going to say it. I'm going to talk about the great work that I have. I'm going to pull up my business card. I'm going to show them my pictures. Like I make sure to talk about myself. And that doesn't always bring you a client 100% of the time, but it's definitely work more than 0% of the time. Believe me, like it still works, okay? So to advertise yourself, first of all, you've got to be very bold. For some people, that means breaking out of your comfort zone. For me, it definitely meant that. I'm not an assertive person in that type of way, but I learned to get there because, you know, like I'm serious about having my own business. So this is what I have to do. Also, you want to also always make sure that you have business cards or flyers or something that people can take home with them with your phone number and your website if you have a website or some sort of social media page. So next is you want to have some sort of social media because in this day and age, as sad as it sounds to say, you kind of don't exist if you are not on some sort of social media platform. Me personally, I feel like Instagram is the best way to go because it's pretty much all pictures and you can put your phone number right there in your bio and people can call you right off of there and you're pretty much good to go. I don't really find it beneficial to go through the work of making a website for this type of business. If I had an actual salon, I would, but just working as a freelancer, I feel like having an Instagram page is enough, but to each their own, some people would like that, you know, it depends. But um, yeah, you always want to have something where people can go and check you out and stalk you if you have to because a lot of times people won't seem interested right there at the spot, but they'll be curious and they're going to go home and check your Instagram page, you know, and, you know, work on your page. And that's okay. Let them, okay? So make sure you have a page full of pictures. If you don't have a lot of pictures, get some friends, get some families, even mannequins. If you can do a really good job and make a mannequin look good. You can do it. Put something on your page, and if you don't have a ton of pictures, you can also squeeze in some quotes or something in between there. You know, it's an Instagram page. You know, it's social media. We know how this works. But you want to make sure that you have some way that people can go online and check you out because a lot of times people don't want to, like, bombard you with questions right there on the spot, so they'll like to just go and check you out. So besides that, you always want to have pictures on your phone, so if they do ask on the spot, you can just show them a picture right away. And then, of course, a business card is, like, the most basic thing you can have as a business owner. Make sure you always have a couple of them in your wallet because people do ask, hey, do you have a card? And it looks very professional when you say, yes, I do. Because if they have a card, you don't want to say, no, but I have an Instagram, you know? Like, I'd rather show them the card, and on my card, I have my Instagram page. Do you guys want to see my card? Let me show you. So when I first, first started doing this, I called myself Miss Glamorous. And that's also what my YouTube channel used to be called as well, before I started using my regular name. So these were my business cards, and they're very fun and girly. And I actually miss using these. I still use them sometimes, but I don't use the Miss Glamorous anymore because I'm not sure if I like it so much. But that's what it looks like. It says freelance beautician, my number, and yeah, I'm showing you guys my number because this is the one I use for doing hair. And then 
I have my Facebook page here because I didn't have an Instagram yet because um, I don't know I guess Instagram was still a little bit new when I first made these because these I made these a while ago and then the back it's just a shortened version of it and it says beauty at your front door because I was a traveling hairdresser but then I wanted to make new ones because I like using my Instagram um, page a lot better I don't even use my Facebook page um, and also, I didn't know I was going to get as many male clients as I have right now. And I felt like my cards were a little too girly to be given to men. So I made these simpler looking ones. So they're black and gold. And it just, calls, it just says um, hairstylist. I don't put traveling anymore because I use these for myself, whether it's for my um, personal business or because I also work at a salon. I give them to the clients who come to the salon as well so they can contact me personally to make an appointment. But if I have clients at a salon, I keep them at the salon. I don't mix the two. And then on the back, I just put the list of the things that I specialize in, which is braids, twists, weaves, crochet, and more. And then it has my Instagram name right there. And then another thing that I do to advertise myself, and you don't have to do this, but I make little flyers that I can leave in shops. And this is what it looks like. I made these myself on a photo editing app called PicMonkey. And it just says hair braiding because that's what I do. That's what I specialize in. But I still put everything that I do, which is in all braids. I mean, it's not all, yeah, it's not all braiding. I also do um, twists, full locks, crochet, and more. And then I have my pictures here and my contact information, which again has my phone number and my Instagram name because I use that as my website. And I just leave these in a bunch of different stores, usually beauty supply stores and some stores in the mall. I just ask the people at the store if it's okay if I leave my flyers there, and I do. So, you know, whatever you can do to advertise yourself, go ahead and do it because it's very hard when you don't actually have an actual shop. So you want to make sure you have a decent um, profile page that people can check out and a, obviously a phone number that they can reach you at. So I thought I had more tips down here, but that's actually all that I had. So that is it for this video. But I'll definitely be doing more um, business-related videos for the hair industry if um, enough people are interested in it. Or even if one person's interested. As long as there's some sort of interest, I would definitely do more videos like this. But besides that, I also do a bunch of other hair videos and, you know, a lot of other things in between. So if you guys have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and check it out and subscribe if you are interested. And for those of you who are following me, stay tuned for more. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.